Hello everyone. Welcome back to this online class. Today we are going to look at how to solve a system of first order linear ODEs. So we are given these uh, questions. We are asked to solve the following systems. In part A, we have 2 dx dt minus 2 dy dt minus 3x is equals to t exponential negative t. Uh, this equation one and two dx dt plus two dy dt plus three uh, x plus eight y is equals to two. So this could be question two. Remember they're simultaneous. And in part B we have two dx dt plus dy dt minus x minus y is equals to one. Again this equation one. Uh, the other one is dx dt plus dy dt plus two x minus y is equals to t. This equation two. So when you talk of a system of ODEs, we simply need to solve the, the ODEs as simultaneous. They are simultaneous ODEs. So how do you go about such kind of problems? Let's start with part A. Of course, we need to write the system in terms of the D operator. So we are going to say that let uh, D be derivative with respect to T. So that uh, in part A, write the system in terms of the D operator. So let me take this up. We are going to have two dx minus two D operating on Y minus three X is equals to T exponential negative T. The other one is two dx plus 2 dy plus 3x plus 8y is equals to 2. And so I can collect like terms. Look at the first equation. Uh, let me combine the terms in x. So I'll have 2d minus 3 because x is common. So 2d minus 3 operating on x, x is common. Also combine those are with y, so we have this end. No, it's not, it's just one. So minus two dy is equals to t exponential negative t. What about the other equation? This and this are like terms, so that will be two d plus three. So this one will give us two d plus three operating on x. The y's we have this and this one. So we have 2d plus 8 operating on y. 2d plus 8 operating on y to give us 2. So that's what we have. Now, once you have done that, the next thing is to eliminate one of the variables. You can eliminate x or you can eliminate y. But let me eliminate x. So what I'll do, I'll eliminate x eliminate x so to eliminate x i have to ensure that the coefficient of x in each of these equations are the same so what i do here the first system you multiply by 2d plus 3 and the other system i mean the other equation you multiply by 2d minus three, so that the coefficient of x is the same in those two equations. So this is what we'll have, 2d plus three times 2d minus three, operating on x, then minus 2d into 2d plus three, operating on y is equals to 2d plus three. Remember the operator must be written to the left of the function that it operates on. That's the first equation. The other one is uh, 2d plus 3 times 2d minus 3 operating on x. Then I have uh, 2d minus 3 times 2d let me write that in a proper manner. 2d plus 8 
operating on y should give us 2d minus 3 operating on 2. So what do we do? I now need to subtract the two equations so that you get rid of x. So when you subtract, you're going to get this. This will cancel with this. So we'll have uh, 2d minus 3 times 2d plus 8. Then uh, we are subtracting. So it's now minus minus. So it's minus minus 2d times 2d plus 3. The all of this is operating on y to give us 2d minus 3 operating on 2, then minus 2d plus 3 operating on t exponential negative t. And so now we can simplify. Let's simplify this so that uh, we see what you're going to get. You can use another color, you can write or. If I open the bracket here in the first term there, I'll have 4d squared, then uh, plus 16d minus 6d minus 24. Here, remember it is a plus, so plus 4d squared plus 6d. Operating on y to give us, when you take the two inside, it means I'll have two times derivative of two minus six, then minus, again, take this one inside, we'll have 2d operating on t exponential negative t minus 3t exponential negative t. So we can now simplify this uh, to get, you can just say, or this and this will give us 8d squared, 8d squared. Then I can see this will cancel with this so that we have plus 16d minus 24. And this one should operate on y to give us here means derivative of 2. Derivative of 2 is a constant. 2 is a constant, so its derivative is 0. So this is 0, because when you differentiate a constant, you get 0. So that means we have 0 minus 6 is just negative 6. What about here? Derivative of t times exponential negative t. So you'll have minus 2. Uh, Keep t constant differentiate exponential negative t. So that's negative t exponential negative t. Remember we are using product rule. Then plus now differentiate t keeping exponential negative t constant. That's what we have. Minus 3t exponential negative t. Or 8d squared plus 16d minus 24 operating on y to give us, this should not be negative six. Uh, here we'll have plus uh, 2t exponential negative t minus two exponential negative t minus three t exponential negative t. And on the right hand side, you can see we have some like terms so that this what we have or 8d squared plus 16d minus 24 operating on y to give us now uh, when we this is negative 6 this and this should give us uh, negative t exponential negative t then I can see this negative 2 exponential negative t which you can as well write as uh, 
negative 6 minus, uh, here we'll have 2 plus t or t plus 2 times exponential negative t. On the left, we have that uh, operator. So you could just write or 8d squared plus 16d minus 24 operating on y. So this is what you need to solve. Let me bracket it. This is a second order linear ODE. Of course, it is uh, non-homogeneous and with constant coefficients. We'll have two solutions. The first one is the complementary function. What we denote by YC. And how do we get it? You solve the homogeneous part. So we need to solve 8d squared plus 16d minus 24 is equals to 0. If I divide by 8, I'll get d squared plus 2d minus 3 is equals to 0. So, of course, there was a y here, which I didn't write. There's also a y here. Our auxiliary equation equate the coefficient of y to zero. So that's d squared plus 2d minus three is equals to zero. What about the roots? Use a quadratic formula. So d1 and two is negative two plus or minus. The square root of 2 squared, that is a 4. Let me just write 2 squared minus 4 times a is 1. Our c is negative 3 over 2a. Our a is 1. So this should give us negative 2 plus or minus. So here we'll have 4 plus 12. That will give us 16 over 2 which is the same as negative 2 plus or minus 4 over 2. And so this is the same as negative 1 plus or minus 2. So in this case here, we have, you can just say that therefore, d1 is equals to negative 1 plus 2, which is uh, 1, and d2 is negative one minus two, so that's negative three. So this is a case of real and distinct roots. The roots are real and distinct. Now, how do you write your solution, yc? That should be equal to c1 exponential x plus c2 exponential negative 3 x. And the question is, is it x? No. Our d operator is derivative with respect to t. So here, this, this is not x but t. Even this one, it should be a function of t, not x, because we are solving for x and y. So our independent variable is t, not x. So take note of that. Don't confuse those two. But it's c1 exponential t plus c2 exponential negative 3 t. Let's find the particular integral. So Roman 2, particular integral. Now you can use any, any of the three methods. The inverse d operator method or the variational parameters method, or the method of undetermined coefficients. Let me use the inverse d operators method. So we'll have one, yp is equals to 1 over 8d squared plus 16d minus 24, operating on negative 6 minus t plus 2 exponential negative t.
So this you can as well write as, I can factor out uh, eight, so one over eight outside, then one over d squared plus two d minus 24, operating on negative six, that's that one, then minus one over d squared plus two d, so this was not 24, remember I factored out eight, so this should be three, take note of that, minus three, because you have factored out the eight, so minus three, operating on uh, t plus two times exponential negative t. So in the first case, this is a polynomial, polynomial of degree zero, a constant term. So this polynomial of degree equal to zero. So that means I drop the first two terms because d squared two is greater than zero and also two d, the power of d is greater than zero. So we only remain with one over negative three. So it will be negative six over negative three. What about here? A product of a polynomial and an exponential function, we are going to use the shift rule, exponential shift rule. So that uh, in this case, our alpha is negative one. So where we have D, you replace that by D plus alpha. That is simply equal to D minus one. Then the second term. So what we have here is one over eight into negative six over negative three then minus exponential negative t. Here we have one over d minus one squared plus two into d minus one minus three. This should operate on t plus two. So that's what we have. So I can't be able to simplify the denominator. Let's see. I need d minus one squared plus two into d minus one minus three. What is it equal to? That should be d squared minus two d plus one plus two d minus two minus three. And so this is uh, d squared. I can see the, the two d will cancel with the other one. A negative. Uh, here we have one minus uh, five. That's negative four. D squared minus four. So that this cannot be written as one over eight. Here we have two minus exponential negative t. Then one over d squared minus four operating on t plus two. So here is a polynomial of degree one, polynomial of degree equal to one. So what happens is that we drop d squared because the power of that d squared simply two is greater than the degree of the polynomial, which is one. So we drop that. So that will remain with one over negative four. So here we now have one over eight into two minus exponential negative t, then times t plus two over negative four. That's what we have. And so this can as well be written as, you can as well write this as uh, one over eight, two plus one over four exponential negative t into t plus two. That's our particular integral. So the general solution in this case, 
general solution is equals to complementary function plus particular integral or y is equals to yc plus yp or let, let's add it here y is equals to what was our yc it was c1 exponential x plus c2 exponential negative 3x i hope that was that's what we got we can confirm that's that's the one then now plus what we have found here as our particular integral. So that is, uh, in fact, I can open the bracket so that I have one over four uh, plus one over 32 into t plus two times exponential negative t. So that's what we have as our solution for y. C1 and C2 are arbitrary constants. Now we need to solve for x. How do we solve for x? That is the question that you need to ask yourself. So you can write to solve for x right here. To find x, we need to eliminate dx dt between equations Roman 1 and 2. That's still in part A. Why are we eliminating dx dt? So that we avoid any integration that we may encounter. So let's go back to those uh, equations in that system in part A so that you see how to eliminate. Of course, these are the equations. I'll, I'll write them so that I tell you how to eliminate dx dt. Of course, what we do here to eliminate dx dt, we simply need to subtract the two equations. If I subtract them, yeah. subtract to get uh, this minus this, that is zero. So this and this will cancel because we are mm. subtracting. Now we have two dy dt minus negative. So that is four dy dt. 3x minus negative 3x, that's the same as 6x. And then 8y, there's no y in the other equation, so plus 8y. That should be equal to 2 minus t exponential negative t. So that's what you need to solve now. So I'm going to write that down. Let me write it down here. So you say eliminate x between, eliminate dx dt between equations one and two to get, this is what you're going to get, four dy dt plus six x plus eight y is equals to 2 minus t exponential negative t. Remember, we want to solve for x, so we need to make x the subject. Make this the subject so that anything that does not depend on x, take it to the right hand side. So, or 6x is equals to uh, 2 minus t exponential negative t minus 4 dy dt uh, minus 8y. So I know I know y, so I'm going to substitute y. So we'll have 2 minus t exponential negative t minus 4. Then derivative of y with respect to t, let's differentiate it. That should give us 
c1 exponential x we are differentiating no 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 this was t not x so you can change it remember this was t Uh, that we said it should be t not not x so even here i need to change it this shall be t so when you differentiate this you get uh, the other term is negative 3c2 exponential negative 3t Derivative of one over four, that is zero, which I don't need to write. Differentiate the other term, that is a plus one over 32. Now, we differentiate t plus two to get one, so that's exponential negative t. Plus now differentiate the exponential function, you get negative one over 32, t plus two, exponential negative, T. That was multiplied by 4. Then there's minus 8y. So I'll say here minus 8 times y, which is c1 exponential t plus c2 exponential negative 3t plus 1 over 32 t plus 2 exponential negative t. Remember this was 6x. So what is what will this be equal to? 2 minus t exponential negative t. I'm opening the bracket minus 4c1 exponential t plus 12 of c2 exponential three negative three t i mean then uh, here we'll have minus one over eight exponential t plus one over eight t plus two exponent this exponential negative t exponential negative t then we have minus eight c one exponential t minus 8c2 exponential negative 3t minus uh, 1 over 4 into t plus 2 exponential negative t. So there are some like terms which you can combine together. Let's start with the constants. The arbitrary constants I mean I start with the C1 and there's another C1. So that would be negative 12 of negative 12 of C1 exponential negative T. Not negative T, but that is positive. Exponential positive T. Combine the C2, 12 of, and here we have negative 8. So that will give us positive 4. 4 C2 exponential negative 3T. Now let's look at uh, the constant terms. We have two. Any other constant term? I can't see. So I'll have there plus two. Now we have, let's combine those exponential functions. Here we have negative t. Here we have minus one over eight. Here we have this and also this other one. The ones with the exponential negative t. So here we'll have negative t, and let me just write plus, we have negative t, that's the first one, this one. The other one was negative one over eight, minus one over eight. And this other one is uh, t over eight plus, uh, because I take one over eight inside, so I'll have, t over 8 plus 1 over 4. And lastly, this one, negative t over 4 minus 1 over 2, exponential negative t. 
if you simplify, you get negative 12 of C1 exponential T plus 4C2 exponential negative 3T plus 2. Uh, what about the other one? You can press that in your calculator so that uh, you see what you're going to get when you simplify. So that should be able to give us, let me just press and see what I'm going to get in my calculator. I'm going to get uh, negative one over nine, 96, no, not one over 96, that's negative uh, <clears throat> six over 16. times what we have here is 3t plus 1. And then you multiply this by exponential negative t. Remember on the left we had 6x. That's what we had. So to make x the subject, you divide by 6. So you can just say here that therefore x will be equal to uh, negative 2c1 exponential t. We are dividing by 6, remember. So that's 4 over 6, which is the same as 2 over 3. c2 exponential negative 3t. And uh, 2 over 6 is the same as... Uh, 1 over 3. So here we have plus 1 over 3. Then lastly we have uh, minus 1 over 16. Three t plus 1 times exponential negative t. So that's what we have as our solution for x. So I'm going to bracket this. Embassy 1 and C2 are arbitrary constants, which you can determine if you are given some initial conditions. So you see we have found y here. You can see y is equals to that one. And we have also found x in this other part. You can see the value of x. So C1 and C2 are arbitrary constant. That is part A. In part B, you do the same thing. Write those in terms of the D operator. So this is what you're going to do. In terms of D operator, we'll have 2 dx plus D operating on y minus x minus y is equals to 1. The other one is uh, dx plus dy. Then I can see this plus 2x minus y is equals to t. And it's better you simplify. So when I simplify, I'm going to get this. Let's combine this and this one. There will be 2d minus 1. Operating on x. Combine the y's, that's d minus 1 operating on y. That should give us 1. What about the other equation? This and this will give us d plus 2 d plus 2 operating on x and dy and the other one is uh, d minus 1 so you can write here d minus 1 operating on y to give us t so those are two equations we need to eliminate x so you can write eliminate x so what do we do you multiply this by d plus 2, and this other one by 2d, 
minus one. We are multiplying. So let's see what you're going to get when you multiply uh, those two equations by those uh, multipliers. So in the first case, the first equation, we'll have this uh, 2D uh, minus one times D plus two. Operating on X, then plus D plus two. This shall multiply D minus one. Operating on Y to give us. So there we'll have D plus two. Uh, this shall operate on one. That's the first equation. So the other equation we are multiplying by 2d minus 1. So again, you write uh, 2d minus 1 uh, times uh, d plus 2 operating on x. Then I can see there's a plus 2d minus 1 times d minus one, operating on y to give us two d minus one, uh, operating on p. So when you want to get rid of x, what you do is to simply subtract the two. So we are going to subtract and write what we get here. So this and this will cancel, though they are the same. So Equation two minus equation one, this is the same as two D minus one times D minus one minus D plus two times D minus one. This is operating on Y to give us two D minus one operating on t minus d plus two, operating on one. So we can simplify, you can write or, I can see d minus one is common, so I can factor out that d minus one is common, so that we have two d minus one, then I can see this minus D minus two. Operating on Y to give us, here you can take this inside so that we have two times derivative of T minus T. Again, take one inside, we'll have minus uh, D, let me use a, uh, another bracket, this one here. D operating on one plus two times one is two. That's what we have. And so we can simplify this further. And just write or we'll have D minus one. Here we have uh, this and this will give us D minus three. So that's D minus three. Operating on y to give us, uh, when you differentiate t, you get one. So here, this derivative will give us one. So that's two times one, two times one minus t, then minus, this is zero because one is a constant. When you differentiate a constant, you get zero. So we simply have minus two. And you see, this is two minus another two, so they'll cancel, we have negative t. So you can say, or d minus one times d minus three, operating on y should give us negative t. So again, this is a, a non-homogeneous linear ODE with constant coefficients. So we need to solve it using 
any method of solving such kind of equations. So there are two solutions. The first solution is complementary function, which we denote by y subscript c. And so in this case, we need to solve the homogeneous part. So you write solve d minus one times d minus three, operating on y to give us zero. So what about the auxiliary equation? That is d minus one, d minus three is equals to zero. What about the roots? The first root is one and the second root is three. So they are real and distinct. So that our solution corresponding to those roots is uh, y c is equals to c1. Remember y subscript c to mean complementary function. c1 exponential t plus c2 exponential 3t. C1 and C2 are arbitrary constants. So the second part is the particular integral. I want us to use the inverse D operators method. So you write YP is equals to one over D minus one times D minus three. That will operate on negative T. What I do here, let me expand that D operator, the denominator. So this is the same as one over, that will be D squared. I'm opening the bracket. So D squared minus three D minus D. So that's minus four D plus three, operating on negative T. Negative T, this is a polynomial of degree one, polynomial of degree equal to one. So what do we do? I'm going to drop this d squared because two is greater than the degree of the polynomial. So we only remain with negative 4d plus three. So this is the same as writing now uh, one over negative 4d plus 3 operating on negative t. So in this case now we use Maclaurin series expansion, but I have to write this inverse d operator as 1 over 1 minus a function of d. So this you can write as a 1 over, because I want to factor out 3, 3 outside into negative uh, 4d over three plus one, operating on negative t. So that this you can as well write as uh, negative one over three times one over, uh, one over one minus four d over three. This should operate on t. Remember, I factored the negative, so that's why we have negative one over zero. So it is now easy to expand uh, this inverse D operator in Mark Lorenz series. So let's expand this. So you can write expand in Mark Lorenz series in Mark Lorenz series. I hope you recall the Maclaurin series expansion that uh, when we have one over one minus z, this is the same as one plus z plus z squared plus z cubed plus so many other terms. And when you replace z by 
by negative z, what are we going to get? So another expansion is when you have one over one plus z. Here, you're going to get one minus z plus z squared minus z cubed plus so many other terms. So in this case, our z is 4d plus 3. So we can now expand that and see what we are going to get. So work it out. When you expand, let me take this up. When you expand, you're going to get this negative one over three into one plus four D over three plus 16 D squared over nine plus so many other terms, this should operate on T. When you take T inside, I'm going to take this inside this bracket, we'll have negative one over three T plus four over three, because the D there means derivative of T, which is one. D squared means second derivative of T, which is zero. So it, it means even the higher order derivatives will evaluate to zero. And so this simply equal to negative t over three minus four over nine. That's our particular integral. So general solution, general solution, you know, y is equals to yc plus yp or y is equals to c1. Let, let's see what we got as our y, yp, yc I mean, c1 exponential t plus c2 exponential 3t. Exponential t plus c2 exponential 3t. Now minus uh, t over three, minus four over nine. So this is uh, the solution for the first variable, that is y. We also need to find x. So remember we said that uh, for you to find x, you can just write here, to find x, we need to eliminate dx dt between equations one and two. Remember the equations in part B. I can write them here, simpler, so that uh, we eliminate dx dt. These are the equations. The first one was two dx dt plus dy dt minus x minus y is equals to one. And the other one was dx dt plus dy dt plus 2x minus y is equals to t. Somebody might ask, why are we eliminating dx dt? Because we don't need to encounter any integration. It's easier to work with derivatives than integrals. So how do you get rid of dx dt? You're going to multiply the second equation by two. So multiply this by two, but you retain the first equation so that we have this. 2 dx dt plus dy dt minus x minus y is equals to 1. The other one we are multiplying by 2, so 2 dx dt 
plus two dy dt plus four x minus two y is equals to two t. Now, the next thing is to subtract the two so that uh, the terms containing dx dt will cancel out. So I need to subtract. What are we going to get when you subtract? This and this will cancel. So this minus the other one is dy dt. And then plus 5x. Negative 2y minus negative y. That's negative 2y plus y, which is negative y is equals to 2t minus 1. So now it's easy to find x. Make this the subject. 5x, what is it equal to? So or 5x is equals to uh, 2t minus 1. Then plus, no, minus dy dt plus y. And now we know why we are going to replace the value of y that we have found. So let me replace y here. So we are going to have 2t minus 1 minus, differentiate the y there, we are going to get uh, c1 exponential t uh, plus 3c2 exponential 3t minus 1 over 3. That's the derivative of y. Then plus our y, which we have found c1 exponential t plus c2 exponential 3t minus t over 3 minus 4 over 9. Let's see whether we have like terms. So this is equals to, uh, let's start with the, of course I can uh, open the bracket fully, 2t minus one, minus c1 exponential t, minus 3c2 exponential 3t, plus one over three, that should be one over three, plus c1 exponential t, plus c2 exponential 3t, minus t over three, minus four over nine. And so what is it equal to? Let's start with the C, those with c1, this and this. That will give us, uh, of course that is zero because they will cancel. So this will cancel with this. What about those with C2? I have negative three and positive one. So that's negative two. Negative two C2 exponential 3T. Then uh, let's look at uh, those with the T, the polynomials 2T, and there's another minus T over three. What is that? equal to, so is that 2t minus t over 3, 2 minus 1 over 3 is the same as what? So remember, that should give us plus, remember, it is the same as 6 over 3, minus 1 over 3, that is 5 over 3, t. And now we have negative 1, plus 1 over 3, minus 4 over 9. So let's start 4 over 9, uh, 1 over 3 minus 4 over 9 is the same as, 1 over 3 is the same as writing uh, 3 over 9. Then minus 4 over 9, that's negative 1 over 9 minus 1. So that should give us negative, remember it's negative 1 over 9 minus 1, which is uh, 9 over 9, that's negative 10 over Nine. So remember that was five x. You can say five x is equals to this one. 
So to get x, you need, you need to divide both sides by five. So you can just say here that uh, therefore, if I divide by five, what are we going to get? You write therefore x is equals to negative uh, one over five c2 exponential 3t plus t over 3 minus 2 over 9. So this is the solution for x. c2 is an arbitrary constant. So now you can see how we have found our two solutions using the d operator method. So every time you are given a system to solve, that's how to go about such kind of a system. So thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is Professor Francis Cage. When you go to the YouTube search, type Francis O'Cage or Prof. Francis O'Cage and you will find me right there. Also, don't forget to comment, like, and share this video. When you meet next time, we look at more problems involving system of first order ODEs. Bye-bye.